SQL there. So SQL becomes more complex. Okay. The next one. So I'll be talking about some of the some of the NoSQL stores, uh, the behavior of the NoSQL stores, some features of features of the NoSQL stores. So if you take a look at uh, key value stores, key value stores are primarily a big hash table, a big distributed hash table with a unique key and uh, also the pointer to the item of the data. So and sometimes they also get accompanied by cache so that uh, we can get a better performance. Keys can be primitive types or objects. So we can also have an object that is part of, that is actually hashed into a key. And then uh, we can access values only by key. So that is one of the fundamental uh, behavior in a key value store. But of course, some of the key value stores give some extra features wherein we will be able to even query by values. But the performance is a hit. And because of this, the amount of BA that you can do with this kind of key value stores are typically limited. And uh, we can actually write specialized replications that works only on top of the keys. Uh, Okay, so maybe we can go for a let's say a composite type of key wherein it, we will will be able to do a bit of multi-dimensional analysis, but uh, primarily they intended to is to, to create a specialized applications, and the initial philosophy came from uh, Amazon's uh, Dynamo paper. So the next one is the documented oriented databases. So basically, the documents are version documents; they will be stored against a key. And uh, also we can retrieve and store these documents in multiple formats like JSON, BSON, or XML documents. Sometimes uh, uh, no SQL databases in fact classify the XML formats as XML documents, XML no SQL stores separately. But uh, most, uh, most of the uh, no SQL stores will support JSON. And this is also schema free. So the next one is the column stores. So each key is uh, basically in this case associated with many columns. So a column is defined as a tuple uh, that contains a name, value, and a timestamp. And the column family, basically here uh, it's a group of columns that are stored stored on a disk together. So if you are accessing the, if you are querying a column in the store, then we need to consider these aspects whether the column belongs to a particular column family or or not. And then uh, row, basically it identifies a specific group of columns in a column family. And then there is a super column also, uh, I think Cassandra talks about it. Uh, this is a column that has uh, multiple columns, of course. And uh, one, one of the major important uh, feature of uh, columnar stores is that uh, they are very excellent compression of the data because you are storing it a column-wise data. And uh, if they, based on the data sparsity, uh, the compression might be better. The other variety of the databases are graph databases. They are based on the graph theory. So that means they consist nodes, and each node contains properties, and node contains edges, which are connecting the other nodes. And uh, in fact, some stores like uh, Neo4j even exhibit ACID uh, transaction capabilities like RDBMS. And one of the one of the primary argument of the NoSQL this graph databases is that they are white whiteboard friendly. So you can actually write your concept on the whiteboard, whiteboard as a graph, and I can actually create the same schema in the most graph databases. Uh, 